Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Senza Tempo Conocorso. Um, and I'm out here with a couple of the puppies to do a video real quick for you guys. I want to um, do a video on the importance of feeding the right food. Very, very, very important. Unfortunately, I've had two incidences now where people were feeding an inappropriate food um, and they their dogs suffered um, very highly. So one of those, um, well, actually, they're both out of Kubrick's litter. There were two males in that litter that at um, seven months old, literally seven months old, like they just turned, I think one of them called me the day they turned seven months old, they were 100 pounds. And that was um, not a good weight for them. They shouldn't have been 100 pounds. And so I asked um, what was going on, like what were they feeding? And I find out that um, one of them was feeding the red bag of Victor, which I had, um, if you guys remember, I had moved Kubrick off of because I had noticed that he was starting to have some accelerated growth. Um, and the other one was feeding, I think it's called um, NutriPro, something like that. It's a Victor food, and it's supposed to be all life stages, but it is extremely inappropriate for large breed puppies. Um, the, the protein is like, I think, 38%. The, um, the calcium is like 1.7%. And that's really what does it for these dogs. The, cal uh, the protein levels being too high is is also a problem. I don't care what anybody says. There's, they, they did a study that said that it wasn't, but I've personally seen it cause a problem when the calcium ratio was correct. It doesn't cause as big of a problem. Like you don't typically see a lot of the accelerated growth, but you will see a lot of bowing over in the front pasterns and flat feet. Um, so, like I said, there's you really got to maintain the right um, calcium ratios, the right um, protein, and the right fat. And um, and so anyway, so I had another customer who I was just talking to, and they have first pick female out of the um, Nirvana litter, and you know they um, they uh, they were they were looking at that food. And I was shocked because it seems like quite a few people are looking at that food. And I just want to be very clear. We don't feed Victor Professional the purple bag because it's cheap. We feed it because it's a really good food. Um, there are much cheaper foods out there that we could feed if we wanted to feed a cheap food. But that's not the intended um, purpose. It's because we find that Corso puppies grow the best on the purple bag of Victor. And so, um, and so anyway, so some of the things that can happen, you can get, so one of the pups, he was a hundred pounds, um, right at the seven month mark. And he had gotten to the point where he couldn't get up and, um, quit. he was in a lot of pain. He couldn't get up and they had taken him to the vet and the vet with some really horrible x-rays, um, as far as like the positioning is concerned, um, tried to b basically diagnose a seven month old puppy with bilateral hip dysplasia. So Upon looking at the x-rays, you can tell that nothing can be seen um, other than the fact that the femoral heads are perfect. The, um, the, the, um, the ball joint itself, like the socket, is fantastic. So there's great coverage. So th the hips are fine. There's, there's, um, there's a lot of what's called subluxation, which means there's a lot of looseness in the joint, but it's a seven-month-old puppy. So there is always going to be looseness in the joint of a seven-month-old puppy. And then take into consideration that the puppy was overweight, that the puppy had accelerated growth, that um, high calcium levels cause inflammation in the joints. You could see how you have a puppy that is, is having all of the symptoms of hip dysplasia while not actually having hip dysplasia. Now, it very well could have escalated to that um, if we had not caught it in time. So my recommendation for them was, um, first off, psh, to get his weight down. Um, and second off to get him on the right food source. Um, and then now to start supplementing him with a joint supplement. Um, I prefer, um, I think it's called new pro it's uh, silver. It's the joint one. Um, I'll put a link to it down at the bottom, but it has three very crucial things. It has Esther, um, Esther C it has MSM powder, um, and it has glucosamine. So, uh, and then, and then it, the, the rest is just, you know, normal multivitamin stuff for a dog. So I really like that stuff, but ultimately the most important thing to do is to get the weight down on the dog. That's super important. 
The reason why calcium is dangerous for puppies is because they cannot regulate, their body cannot regulate calcium intake. And so, um, and so it, it, their, their body can't get rid of it. So, um, so anyway, so very, 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 very important that you not feed your dog something that is, uh, that your, your large breed puppy, something that is over 1.3% calcium, um, around 26% protein. Um, and you can do a 20% fat. You can do lower than that. You can even do a lower protein than that. That's totally fine. Um, but you just, th those are the absolute maximums. So, um, and, uh, and like I said, a 1.2 calcium is going to be a little bit better than a, um, than I would even say, I would say the lower the calcium, the better. Um, this person was not only feeding that very high calcium food, but they were also supplementing raw on top of that, which is also bad because raw has calcium in it. It has calcium in the bones. So you really don't want to try to go willy nilly with these dogs. They're, they're very big. They do not, um, fare well when you decide to just willy nilly do what you want with their diet. You need to keep it simple. Um, you need to not take chances because you could literally do permanent danger, um, damage to your dog that could absolutely cost your dog its life. And that is not a joke. You can literally have a dog that you have to put down very early because, and I'm talking, extra, we're talking two, three year old dog simply because you, you, you love it. You loved it too much. You ever heard about people killing plants because they water them too much? It's, it's like that. You can, you know, you can nurture too much. And so when you start messing around with the uh, food on these dogs, psh, quit trying to get through here. Um, when you, when you, uh, when you try to mess around with the food on these dogs, you could very well do some really serious damage. So, um, now I want to tell you that even if you're feeding the right food, you have to make sure that you are at, that you're not overfeeding the dog. So I have these three dogs out here to kind of show you uh, what I'm talking about here. So um, a way to know this is this is uh, you know not not an unhealthy dog. You can see here you can see some rib going on here. Not just when she's breathing in. Um, that's something people will try to show me a picture of the of a moment when their dog is breathing in and it makes it look like there's rib showing. No, that's not what I mean. I mean rib. You know even if the dog is is not breathing in. Um, another thing that you'll look for is an indention over the hips here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like an indent. Um, and there's a defined waist. She's not gonna... Come on, you wanna stand up for me? Um, there's a defined waist. You can, you can just barely see a hint of hip bone. Um, you can see the line down the back here. This is a very healthy dog. This dog is a little bit different. She comes from different lines. And the reason I brought her out is because I wanted you to see... That different dogs are um, are, are going to be different. So this girl, watch out, move, girl. Um, and I will tell you that psh, these bigger lines have more of a tendency to get a condition called pano, which is basically growing pains. Um, and it can happen to any large breed dog. Ah, ah, and Geisha, um, her lines are really big, so they're kind of um, they they can be known for that. They have a lot of bone. Um, good boy, Kubrick. She penalized her for jumping on me like that. Psh, uh, so, um, but you can see here, you can't see the line down her back because her coat is a lot heavier. She's got a lot more, um, skin, but you can see there's an indent, um, around the, um, the butt area. You also can't see a lot of rib on her because, um, of her coat, right? She has a very thick coat and, um, she's got a lot of loose skin right now. And so you can't see a lot of that, but you can still see that she's a very fit dog. Um, and, and, and so that's what I want to make sure that, that you're looking at. Same thing with um, here, Kubrick. Um, now he's a little bit portlier. I would say I would not want him to be any heavier than he is right now. You can still see the, hit, the, the indent above the hips. You can still see that there's ribs. You can still see that there's tuck up, um, but a little bit less on him. But why tuck up, we mean on the underside of the dog, there's like a little where it comes up right there. You want that to be there. And he has it too, but um, he's a little bit on the, on the chubbier side. So... Um, these dogs can go through very weird stages where they're limping and they're acting, their gait is, is not good, especially these large males. And you really just have to kind of let them go through that. Kind of like the way that a, that a baby horse is very, um, a little bit ungainly and unsightly for a while. These, these Corso can do that too. And, um, you just have to kind of close your eyes and just let them do their thing. But the most important thing is that you recognize that depending upon what lines your dog has, they're all going to grow at different rates. So just because your puppy doesn't look as big as somebody else's puppy at the same age does not necessarily mean that your puppies or that your dogs will be different sizes when they're grown. 
Uh, it's a common misconception. Some puppies are born with more bone. I would say that this is a perfect example of that. This female here, she comes from lines with a lot of bone. She's off of Hefe, um, which is off my Blondie um, stuff. Nirvana is off of Blondie. There's a lot of bone there. Um, this female here does not come from lines with as much bones, but she's only seven months old, and this female's nine months old. So you, so you can imagine that she's probably going to be just as big as her, but she does not have the appearance as um, uh, as she does because she does ah, ah, because she doesn't have a lot of um, of bone, and um, she just appears as a, a trimmer, more um, streamlined dog. But they're still both going to probably be around the same size. And they're also growing differently. These puppies grow a bit faster. They look really big and bulky and heavy when they're young. And they um, have a tendency to grow really ugly. Um, I even gave away Hefe's brother thinking that he had hip dysplasia. I was sure I'd, I, he, he couldn't gait. He would limp. He would do all this stuff. Come to find out he grew out of it completely. X-ray shows that the dog has fantastic hips. So... Um, you know, Pano is a thing and be mindful of that. The way that you get through that the fastest and the easiest is that you do not overfeed your dog. Make sure that your dog is at a very healthy weight. S grow slow. Um, that is the way to a long, healthy life for a big dog. The faster they grow, the more likely they are to develop um, orthopedic issues. All of the research shows this. Um... And uh, you can literally create issues where there are none, okay? Hip dysplasia is not just an inherited issue that people get from breeders who are not health testing. That is not true. I would say more often than not, it's environmental. And, and that is the God's honest truth. Um, so, um, so how to avoid it, right? And most importantly, feed an appropriate food for your breed of dog. Um, for Corso, for large breed dogs, that's going to be low protein, low calcium, low fat. Um, watch out now. And um, keep the weight low. Do not do repetitive exercise. You can let them run around and play on their own, but don't take them on long walks. Don't take them hiking for long distances. They have a lot of um, looseness in the joints just from being um, big old puppies and needing to grow. And that kind of stuff can cause inflammation. And so... Inflammation is not a good thing for a growing puppy. And, um, and so you want to make sure that you avoid any type of inappropriate um, breed activities um, for your pup. Um, ah, so those, those really are the two fundamental things. Weight and food. And that is really going to get you there. It's not about feeding raw. It's not about feeding grain-free it is feeding an appropriate diet for your breed of dog that does not cause um, complications in the growth pattern of the dog. Because this is the truth here, and I want you to listen very carefully to this. There is nothing that you can do that will ultimately change the size that your dog is going to mature into. Nothing. All you can do is get them there faster and ruin the dog in the process. But that is all you can do. That dog will only be as big as its genetic blueprint has already been written. It's, it's written in the dog's DNA. There are things that can um, stunt a dog's growth and make them not grow as big, but that's you know t entirely separate issue and that's just really not gonna be diet related. I'm just gonna be honest. Um, so, you know, what do I recommend? I recommend Victor Professional. I don't get any money for saying that. Victor Professional, Professional is the, the, the bag. Um, it's not the brand. Um, Victor is the brand. So the Professional is a purple bag. It is in all life stages. And it is very appropriate for the Corso. Um, for growing Corso. And even adult Corso. Um, so this, this breed is a breed that rewards people that are patient. Um, not people that are impatient. And that, you know... Um, they don't want to wait for an adult dog. You know, they want to feed it a whole lot and this and that. And you are not helping your dog by having it overweight. You are killing it by having it overweight. And these dogs in particular, the larger the dog is, the more sensitive they are to being overweight. So um, please keep your puppies at a healthy weight. Don't feel the need to compete with people who don't do that. Don't worry whenever somebody says how much their dog weighs at a certain age. It doesn't mean that your dog won't get that big. It may very well mean that your dog has taken a different route to the same 
um, to the same place. And it may not. You may have a smaller dog. And you know what? That's fine. If, if, if that matters to you, then you need to pay more and, and deal with a breeder who is uh, honest and, and will get you that big dog. Because I have lines that are known for producing a lot of size. And they're healthy. Um, and so they do exist. But, you know, you need to be Johnny on the spot as far as making sure that you get on those lists so that you can get that kind of spot. Psh, geisha. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little um, video and um, I'm going to have this on my YouTube, uh, uh, pardon me, on my um, website to try to help people because um, it really is a big issue and you need to be, you need to be very careful. It's the, it's the one thing that really and truly will destroy your puppy. So hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk at you later. Bye.